Horseshoe Monsters made $200 million last year from its merchandise. Chief Financial Officer Davinia Knowles joins us today to tell us how you make so much money out of something that doesn't really exist. Welcome to Tech Sessions. We're with Davinia Knowles today. Welcome. Thank you. Chief Operating Officer and Chief Financial Officer of Mind Candy, which is the home of Moshi Monsters, which anybody out there who has a child between the ages of, say, 5 and 11 won't have been able to escape. How did you end up? at Mind Candy. There are, I know you did an archaeology degree. I did. The routes that people have into the tech industry are often very diverse, but how did that one happen? Yes, so mine is like equally weird and wonderful. So I did an archaeology degree. I quite swiftly realised there wasn't a lot of money to be made, unless your time team or somebody else. Um, and so I went into an antiques because I wanted to stay close to kind of history and, and old things. Uh, and then got into kind of design and creativity that way. Uh, and then I met Michael, and that's kind of how it all sort of happened. Was that at a party, by any chance? <laughs> no, it was actually through a coded advert in The Guardian that I had to decode, send in my CV, and then I met him after that. Oh, interesting. Yes, it appeals to creative brains. So you have to do the grown up stuff mm -hmm. at Mind Candy, you have to make it a financially responsible and viable business. How do you organise a kind of creative chaos in a company like that? I think it's really interesting, uh, companies like this and how they operate. I think what you need to do is be somebody who puts in enough rigour that you can maintain a business uh, and sustain a business without just squashing people and crushing their creativity. People still need to feel empowered, they need to have autonomy, they need to be able to make decisions. Uh, the way we've sort of done it is by making a startup of startups in Mind Candy so that people still have a lot of freedom to make their own choices, but there's an, just enough rigour that it kind of has processes and systems and so on. It's very interesting that your core product is on screen, it's digital in various forms, but you've had to introduce a very extensive licensing and franchise model. Is that really the part that makes the money? Do you have to have a physical interpretation in order to make money from a digital idea? So. No, and um, I think we did it as kind of part of a strategy to make sure that Moshi was a 360 uh, brand, 360 degree brand, so that it had all of the facets that children could get involved in. So it existed in digital to begin with, and then we realised quite quickly that we could take it offline and kids could have a more immersive experience, an interactive experience with it as well. So half of our revenue comes from the digital side, but half of it comes from the licensed product side, which includes all sorts of things like magazines, physical products, all sorts of other stuff as well. But what's really nice about that is the magazine, for example, kids really get involved in it, they get immersed, they read stories, they get to know characters, and it just, it's lovely because it helps the website as well, so it all kind of ties together. You made, I think, $100 million in 2011 from your merchandise. Can you tell us how much? <laughs> Can you tell us how much you made last year? So uh, last year it was about, it was over double that. Um, so it's a huge franchise and it's uh, in different English speaking markets now as well. It's never been localised, which is a huge opportunity for us. Um, but yes, yeah, I mean, it's massive uh, because there are so many products that you can create uh, and so many ways you can get children involved and they can kind of really enjoy it. And Michael said before that you've been a bit caught out by the speed at which kids, and I know from my own kids, yeah. the enthusiasm they have for tablets. What are you working on in, in this space and how quickly is that happening? So uh, the tablet space is fascinating. Yeah, kids have moved quite swiftly onto it. It has caught us by surprise. Um, we are working on a number of different apps. They are strategically different in the sense that we're building a Moshi app that will be Moshi on a mobile device. Um, which we hope will be, be the new digital centre, digital heart of the product for kids. Then there's another uh, group of tentpole products which should help with brand longevity and also introduce new characters which we may want to spin off into their own brands. So there's a number of different things that we're working on. Um, children are a very fickle audience to make for. I was thinking back to He-Man and uh, various other um, things that age me quite a lot. Um, but how do you insulate your business? when you are making a product for children and, and make sure that Mind Candy yeah. has some longevity in the, in the business. Yeah, so companies go about this different ways. Uh, there are some products like He-Man, etc., that are, they are quite faddy and, and they do burn bright and then fade away. We're creating products more sort of in the Disney vein. They have brands that have been going for 
you know, 20 years, 30 years, etc. So we want to make sure that Moshi is an evergreen brand for the future. Uh, you can do that by just keep reinventing the brand, innovating on the brand, making sure there's different mediums through which kids can experience the brand, um, making sure that different characters come out, tell different stories. There's so many ways of doing it. And what's coming up next then? Because the, the core of Mind Candy's products is often really, really good storytelling, which is something, I guess, which is, which is evergreen. Um, what else are you working on? Are there any completely new projects you can tell us about? Uh, I can tell you about them in very vague terms. So basically we're creating new IP at the moment, which is very exciting. Um, Mind Candy, you know, we created Moshi, it's an amazing character-led brand. That's what we're really good at, stories and characters and worlds. Uh, so we're creating two other new IPs. One is more for kind of older than Moshi boys. Uh, and again, it's a character-led, has a little bit of history in it, a bit of education, fun, silliness. Um, and then we're creating another uh, new IP, which is for a much more generic audience, much broader. And again, it's character-led, it's funny, silly, irreverent. It has all of the same sort of product values as Moshi for a different audience. That's probably about as much as I can say. You know, that, that's a, enough of a teaser. Um, can we expect Mind Candy to go public any time in the next couple of years? I mean, Michael has spoken about this um, or hinted at this <laughs> on a couple of occasions now. Do you need to do that to go to the next level? So it's an interesting one. We get asked this question all of the time. I think that, you know, we have talked about it as a potential strategy for us in the future. We have no formal plans. Uh, our investors are amazing. They're very, very bullish about the business. Uh, they're very excited. They know we have lots of great products in the pipeline. So we're just going to keep growing it and see where we end up. Davinia, thanks very much for coming in. It's been really interesting. Awesome. Thanks very much.